Good evening. Let's get this meeting started, shall we? Let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Gentlemen, do you have the uh, update tonight? Let me uh, welcome to a meeting of the North Penn School District's Board of School Directors January 16, 2014. And why don't you give us our update? Got the stuff in my pants. It wasn't cheap, so I just have to like complain. <laughs> North Penn News Update. I'm Melissa Cubitt. It's been a busy couple of weeks for our facilities and transportation staff clearing snow and keeping our buildings and buses running. We would like to extend a special thank you to our transportation and facilities departments for their tremendous efforts during the recent weather events. They always get the job done and keep our facilities safe. NPSD school nurse Sally Kaufman was recognized by the North Penn United Way as a 2014 superhero. Sally was selected for her dedication to the students of the NPSD and for all of her efforts in the community. Sally joins the ranks of fellow North Penn superheroes Bill Bartle and Linda Law. Congratulations. Superintendent Dr. Kurt Dietrich recently awarded one of the NPSD Superintendent Honor Roll Awards to a member of our support staff. District painter Cindy Danko was presented the award with a surprise visit from the North Penn Prize Patrol during a facilities meeting in January. Cindy has been a part of the North Penn family since 1981. Congratulations, Cindy. January is School Director Recognition Month. We would like to thank all of our Board of School Directors who bring over 93 years of service and volunteer countless hours in meetings, committees, and attending school events. And finally, January is also Music Festival Month. The NPHS Band Ensembles concert took place earlier this month. The NPSD Choral Festival is taking place tonight and the NPSD String Festival takes place in a few weeks. You can view all of these great showcases of student talents on North Penn Television, on Comcast Cable Channel 28, Verizon Cable Channel 29, and anytime online at www.youtube backslash NPTV. That is all for this North Penn News Update. I'm Melissa Cubitt. Have a great night. Welcome to our regularly scheduled action meeting. This meeting is being videotaped for community cable channels. Individuals attending this meeting and intending to speak to the board should be aware that they are being videotaped. In order to meet the requirements of Pennsylvania's Sunshine Law, it is necessary to record the names of all citizens who speak to the board during the meeting. To assure compliance with this requirement, it is essential that those planning to address the board come to the microphone, state their name and address, and sign the Audience of Citizens logbook. Members of the audience are asked to limit their questions and comments. To allow time for all those who wish to speak to the board, the board president may ask the individual to yield the microphone to the next speaker. And now, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Now please rise and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. All right. Um, you have recognition? I do. Hey, you uh, know what, I'll, I'll just say, ditto the comments about our facilities, folks. Um, I mean, nasty weather and and cold weather and we managed and, you know kids got to school safely and got back out and you know bus drivers facilities everybody great job they did do a great job and uh i think i mentioned before uh, if i didn't um i appreciate it very much and in fact i did mention it at the last meeting um and that that cold morning in particular what a morning what a morning to remember and uh brian can tell you brian geiger's in the audience our transportation director uh, we had buses that didn't start. Uh, we had, uh, you know, dead batteries, and it was a challenge for us. I immediately came down, uh, was out there hovering over these engines. We're spraying the, uh, you know, the ether into the air intakes and jumping and yelling and go ahead. And, oh, we got another one going and, you know, ticked them off. Eventually we got, got them all started, but it, it took a lot of effort, and, and the folks did a tremendous job from the mechanics to the bus drivers to all our maintenance folks to keep our facilities running. 
Uh, we had some freeze ups here or there, uh, but we, we made it through. And I got a lot of positive feedback from our parents. They appreciated we were able to have school and we got it done safely. So thank you to everyone. Here, here. I do have. Um, I do have uh, under recognitions and proclamations, uh, as was mentioned in the opening segment, January is School Director Recognition Month. And I would like to thank all of the school uh, directors for uh, their service to the school district, to the members of this community. And I have some special, um, a special resolution here from the Pennsylvania School Boards Association that I'd like to read. And it reads, School Director Recognition Month, January 2014, whereas the role of locally elected school officials has served the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and local communities in meeting the needs of public education since the passage of the Free School Act in 1834. And whereas these school boards have discharged their responsibilities to public education in a manner which has placed public education in the forefront of educational systems, and whereas locally elected officials have distinguished themselves and their communities in this non-paid volunteer public service commitment, and whereas the contributions of these men and women should be recognized and appreciated by those who benefit from the workings of our public school system, now, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania School Boards Association hereby proclaims the month of January as School Director Recognition Month in this Commonwealth and further resolve that this proclamation shall be communicated to all school districts, school officials, and local communities in a planned program which brings visibility and awareness to the role of the locally elected school officials to the citizens of this Commonwealth. From the Pennsylvania School Boards Association, uh, they also provided for us certificates, and I will come and uh, hand each of you a certificate from the Pennsylvania School Boards Association, and they all read the same. They have the name inserted, uh, School Director Recognition Month, January 2014, honoring and has an individual's name, who volunteers time and talents for the betterment of public education in our community. So thank you so much for your service. It's appreciated very, very much. <clears throat> We're using our expensive audio camera here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for your service. Very well. Thank you. Frank, thank you so much for your service. I appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. I have a hall in the wall. I'll put this up over there. In the Hall of Fame? In the Wall, no. the wall of Fame. That concludes recognitions and proclamations. Thank you, Kurt. All right, we're going to move forward with our action agenda tonight. And the second thing on the agenda is an audience of citizens. Anyone wishing to speak to the board, please feel free to step forward. State your name and address for the audience of citizens logbook. <clears throat> Mr. Patchell, welcome. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, it's good to see everybody. And I hope this is a really productive year. And I, I'm sure that everybody is up and ready to go and it does look like the economy is uh, improving so uh, our uh, revenue will probably be improving and but we still have to be ever vigilant on our our cost control and looking relentlessly at what can be done to make the district more efficient uh, my name is William Patchell and I live at 404 Bonnie Lane Lansdale Pennsylvania I've had two children go through the district and it's very successful and uh, my wife and I are very pleased with the, uh, with the level of experience and expertise that we've always had with the district. Uh, good evening, and as always, I want to thank the board for their tireless devotion to the district, the students, and the stakeholders. Yours is truly a labor of civic love. I have completed my research, and as you know, I, my ongoing topic has been the football injuries, the concern which society and uh, the college's uh, NFL with the concussions. I have completed my research, and the final tally is troubling. 
99 players started the season, 88 finishing. Why is this troubling? Yes, many came from the JV team. Are they keeping track of the concussions that they have suffered cumulatively while they play? Some have played with the Cannoneers. I'm sure they have many, many that are, have not been recorded, but I believe in the future when they go on to college, they will have to substantiate all the injuries that they've had, and they may or not be offered a scholarship but after due diligence is done, I'm sorry, son, you're all burnt out. So, and as we go through, we're finding more medical evidence every year of the consequences. And with the settlement which the NFL offered the players, the judge has overturned that as being woefully inadequate. $700 million is being woefully inadequate. So that is yet to be determined. I feel very sorry for the thousands of players. They're finding out this information. It's coming to light. Little did they realize when this book was written, Inside the Helmet, I tried to find a really good book, which was written by somebody very knowledgeable in, in what was going on. And uh, this book, Inside the Helmet is uh, by Peter King, and uh, a senior writer at Sports Ill Illustrated, has covered the NFL for the last 10 years, so I figure that his, his insight is well worth listening to. And uh, he had interviews, and I'll just give you the quarterback in the eye of the storm. This is just a short, it's a very unforgiving sport. It can ruin you all in one day. You hate losing, it tears you up. A who wants it drill over and over. Forget the games, how did you do in the who wants it? The next day in school, you go back and say, I kicked, deleted, in, in who wants to, who wants to win. The pass rusher. This is a one-man gang. Pass rushing is the most violent part of every down game. There wasn't a single time we didn't talk about the violence and the pain and the brutality of the game. And on 21 after 55 snaps, the sole responsibility of two Dolphin player offensive linemen was to block Mr. Smith. And once I asked Mr. Smith if he considered what he did in an art, he said, it isn't an art, it's a car accident. That's a professional player and I'm sure that he suffered Many, many injuries, which are too numerous to remember. And the running back. A back has to be physically and mentally tough. This starts in high school. Don't give up when you're hit. Don't give up when you're hurt. Don't be gun shy. Bang in there every time. Don't care what's going on or how many yards it is. That's one thing you never want to show the defensive line. No. Oh, we've got him gun shy. Well, that's pretty serious. And this is from professional athletes that have honed their skills and have developed their bodies where that they can uh, withstand a lot of the hits. When two people hit you with a cumulative weight of over 600 pounds, I can understand why the rate of concussions is serious and needs more due diligence. Uh, and why did the judge overturn the NFL settlement? $700 million is nothing that is needed to, to cover the cost. Thousands of players over many years. We don't really know what the total outcome is going to be, and we don't know whether we're adding actually to the problem. Well, our, our report for the end of the year, which I got very quickly, it was amazing. I'm, uh, uh, Susie Krauss was very helpful. And, the, I got it right away, and I said there were, uh, in the areas of concussions, now this is only four months, uh, we had 99 players start and 87 finish. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 concussions. There's no resolution on how they were reintegrated into the team. Are these concussions being cumulatively tallied? Oh, son, you're going to play basketball? I don't think so. You've already had two of these. 
You don't want to add to the problem. It could be very serious. The man could actually the player could actually be burnt out by the time you go to college, or he may never go to college. He suffered a very serious injury like this one person on August, September 6th, spine injury. Not good. I don't think many of you people are really aware, oh yes, there's injuries, and people who observe the games, oh yes, there are injuries, and you see people taken off the field, but there's no follow-up. I don't think a lot of the players, there's a disconnect between Wow, do you know what happened to so-and-so? That was really bad. He was out for three months. He may never come back. How many people, when they go out, their parents say, you know, I'm not going to sign your waiver anymore. You're not going to play anymore. Because the mothers and the fathers are starting to really get, wow, I hope when he's 50 years old he remembers where he lives. It's pretty serious. Then we had right hamstring, left fifth finger, right thumb, concussion, left knee, hamstring, left knee, shoulder, spine, left foot, concussion, right shoulder, concussion, right upper leg, right ankle, concussion, concussion, thumb. The concussions are picking up speed now because the games are getting more toward the playoffs. So we're playing with more due diligence or playing and I asked Luann, I said, are you sure that these guys are telling you the truth? Oh, no, I'm checking them scrupulously. They won't get reintegrated unless, they, unless I feel that they can go back. So she's watching. I, don't, I think they're more diligent now, and they're more watchful than they were before. So for a player to really <coughs> want to play, it's very hard to get back now. Bill, yeah. can I interrupt you for a minute? Bill, yes. here. Yes. Um, just being this is being taped and everybody's listening to one side the only thing i'd like to add is when you brought this up in the past like many other board members here mm -hmm. we checked into some of this okay when a uh, on the football field when somebody is hurt and he's carried to the side there's that medical team that evaluates him mm -hmm. and a doctor there's always there's four rotating doctors the doctor he must sit out a minimum of one play. If not, he's out for the game or whatever. It doesn't come back. But not only does the medical team evaluate him, but he gets the doctor's blessing. I'm not saying that's anything with long term. I'm simply saying okay. the public should know that nobody goes back into play I unless know. the doctor says, you've got my blessing, you can play again. Okay. Just FYI. I that's know. All. I'm just saying is that with the incident of concussion, it used to be, and I believe there was somebody last year, they said, oh, no, we have an orthopedic blah, blah, and a thing. We're way past orthopedics now. We're back into the doctors that their specific specialty is concussion, and there's a very long reintegration period. If they suspect you've had a, had a severe, we had 99, now we only had 87. So I assume, because last year I got the information, I said, well, what happened to these people? Oh, well, they would have never got back. They, they, they couldn't get back. Well, they, probably 95% of them are seniors that moved on. No, no, they couldn't get reintegrated. They, the damage was done partly through the season, and they said by the time you get cleared, the game's all over. So anyway, Mr. we'll Tommy, move on. Wrap it up, please? I'll let you okay, okay. Time. So I said... How long will we have to sit and know these statistics, and what will it take? The first person that has a broken neck is a, a paralyzed for the rest of their lives. I think there's going to be parents out there that are very, you know, I'm sorry my kid ever played. I don't want to get into that position. We have to make this game incredibly safe. This can't be like cigarettes were 30 years ago. Well, you know, we need to, we need to work on it. And we need to get this down to zero. I don't know how we're going to do it, but it needs to go to zero. We can't let one person. If this was a job site, they'd close it down. OSHA would actually close this down. Because it's a game and it's sanctioned, it never gets shut down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Petrol. Anyone else? Yes, my name is uh, Ed Madge. I reside at 424 Bonnie Lane. Uh, Mr. Patchell is one of my uh, one of my neighbors, as a matter of fact. Um, I want to concur with one of the statements that he had that uh, you know one of your biggest responsibilities is financials of this district. And 
being a bus driver myself, one of the biggest operations you have within this district is your transportation department. I did read on your website that uh, you're considering uh, renewing the contract for first student. Uh, one of the things working in the department, I just want to kind of bring a point of order to you or just some food for thought. Transportation has been in kind of a state of limbo for almost three years now. Um, and sooner or later, you got to come to realize what, what your goals are. And one of the things as far as efficiency, one of the places, a lot of things you can't control in this district. You can't control the price of power. It is what it is. Your contracts are your contracts. Certain expenses are certain expenses. But one of the places you can economize and save a tremendous amount of money is within your own transportation department by looking at efficiencies and so forth. You have made a few steps towards that in the recent months. We've had an individual in there reviewing some of the routes and looking at the efficiencies of routes and times of individual drivers. Uh, and one of the things I, I'd like to put forth through you is I've always noticed, uh, and I've been in a involved with a few other districts and listened to some of the things, the way they do things. Transportation is a very large entity within this district, several hundred employees and a tremendous amount of money being spent on it. But I notice it is always, I hate to use the term, bastard stepchild that is always under the guise of another individual whose responsibility may be the business manager and or the facilities individual. And it's maybe not their expertise and it's not something which they may have a tremendous amount of knowledge and it's a responsibility that maybe that individual really is best not to have but it has been put up, thrust upon them. I'd like to make a recommendation you take into consideration that the, uh, Dr. Dietrich has what he calls, I guess, your, the cabinet. And the transportation director should be somebody that reports directly to him uh, for accountability. I mean, I understand that the business manager would be able to determine budgets and so forth for that and allow the operation, the funds that it requires. But I think you would have probably a little uh, quicker action on certain things. And you may find an ex uh, kind of streamlining some of your efficiencies by making a position where the individual that is responsible for transportation reports directly to you instead of through a I guess the lack of a better term, a middleman, uh, which may or may not understand all the dynamics in that department. It is an extremely complex department. I think Mr. Geiger sitting there will probably tell you, uh, probably second to none, probably facilities is probably about the only thing that's more complex, trying to keep everything running, snow removed, heaters, heating systems and everything in operation. Uh, I, I think it's unfair to put all the responsibilities to transportation, and I'm sure anybody that's worked with it has seen some of the many headaches between buses not starting, personnel issues, and so forth, that uh, you may want to consider my suggestion of uh, having that individual a little more accountable to you, the board, directly. Uh, I hope you take that into consideration. Thank you very much for your time. Anyone else? All right, let's move the agenda forward. I recommend approval of the minutes of the <coughs> December 12, 2013 action meeting and the minutes of the January 7, 2014 work session as circulated. So moved. Motion by Mr. Kerr. I need a second, people. Second. Let's move it. Second <laughs> by Mr. Second. Second. O'Donnell. Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Okay, let's start with the committee reports. Who's carrying support services? Today? I'll handle it. There's nobody else here. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't say uh, Rick. I have it. Um, <laughs> support service committee, uh, January 16th. It says John Schilling. I'm not John Schilling. The <clears throat> support service committee has not met since the last board meeting. The committee asked for your support for closed captioning for NPTV as listed on the agenda tonight. The next meeting of the Support Services Committee is scheduled for Monday, January 26th at 6 p.m. right here. End of report. Any questions of Support Services this evening? Education, Community, and Policy, Mrs. Leonard. Thank you. At the ECP Committee meeting on Monday, January 13th, several topics were on the agenda. The committee reviewed the proposed calendar for the 2014-15 school year. This calendar includes 12 teacher in-service days and five designated Section 1502 local holidays. Potential Act 80 days are identified in the calendar. Also, provisions for the snow makeup days, should they become necessary, are noted on the calendar. We did have updates regarding the advertising campaign. 
Uh, thus far, $39,000 has been billed to advertisers. In addition to selling ad space in designated areas, sales for ads in the 2014-15 school calendar are underway. Also during the meeting, an overview of the PA educator effectiveness model was presented to the committee. This is Pennsylvania's new observation and evaluation process that is being implemented this year for teachers and in 2014-15 for principals. The model is based on the Charlotte Danielson rubric and incorporates information gleaned from observations and data. The committee also discussed board policy number 5143, which addresses the school nutrition service charging policy and how it is applied at the elementary, middle, and high schools. Parents are able to register online with My Payments Plus to receive updates regarding their students' account school nutrition services. Oh, excuse me, their student account. School Nutrition Services will ensure that parents are notified when their child has charged a meal at school. Student travel requests were also on the agenda. On this evening's agenda for action are the 2014-15 school calendar and the student travel requests. The next ECP committee meeting will be Monday, February 10th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Any questions for ECP this evening? Uh, Wait a minute. Mr. Charnock first. I just wanted to make a comment that it was good. Um, <coughs> Pam Gallagher explained <coughs> the uh, food services and how that site works in terms of, you know, it's not just for putting money into the account. You can use it just for a balance if there's a low balance. So I think it's important that the community understands that because I didn't even realize that myself, that you could use it just to uh, understand if they're, the account's low and get notification on that. Thank you for noting that, Mrs. Charnock. We are uh, putting a campaign forward to encourage more people to sign up for that feature. You don't need to um, you know, pay any fees or anything like that. You simply sign up and then you can get your uh, alerts when the balances become low. You know what, I, <clears throat> that's important information, but I don't think we just said that clearly. I mean, what we're talking about, <clears throat> can you spell it out? Sure. Kurt, my my Payments right? Plus, um, we work with them in terms of uh, our, our food service um, point of sale software. Uh, there are a couple different features to that. One feature is you can have money put on your account uh, by using their service, and there's a small little service fee if you do it that way, or you can send uh, cash or a check with your child to the school and give it to the cashier uh, in the uh, uh, cafeteria and have the money put on that way, and the money is on account. And then each uh, day when the child goes through the line, uh, the um, appropriate deduction is taken out of that account uh, for that child's lunch. And one of the features they have is that you can set the amount that you would like to get an alert for. So if it gets down to $10 and you'd like to know that, you can get an email or some other uh, mechanism is used to give you an alert electronically that your balance is now at $10. And then you can, uh, you know, make an effort to get money sent either to the school via uh, the child to, to have it added by the cashier or you can go online and use your credit card and you know, they pay a little service fee like you usually do when you do those online transactions. Uh, that's the way that uh, My Payments Plus works. I think it also has some features where you can uh, monitor some of the things that your child is eating too. So if you're thinking, mm, I think he may be buying things I don't want him to buy, uh, at the a la carte line, you can see that also, I think. Now, is, it, is there a link on the North Penn website to that? Yeah, Maddie is in the audience and do you know if there's a link on there? You can, I'll, you don't have a mic, but I'll report it. Yes, there is. There is. And uh, if it's not on the quick link, I'll do that tonight. Okay. We'll double check to make sure it's one of the that. quick links so that it's very, really, very easily accessible. Thank you. That helps. <coughs> Mr. O'Donnell. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Diane, um, we briefly talked about this today, but I just wanted to bring this up. I just became aware of uh, uh, some information that's going on in, in Harrisburg. Uh, it it's refers to the Holocaust education. Apparently, prior to the holiday break, the Senate Appropriations Committee reported out House Bill 1424, which amends the school code requiring instruction concerning the Holocaust, genocide, and human rights violations. The major amendment made in committee is to make the instruction mandatory rather than voluntary. The bill likely will not get passed in the Senate, but more than likely is going to become part of the school code uh, in the spring, I'm told probably April or May. Uh, then I was told... Um, that with all, 
all bills coming out of Harrisburg, that there's always a, a, a date I have to start this, a, a start date, and which is typically 60 days. So my question to you is, um, although it's not part of the school code, has the curriculum committee been looking at this? And I think you said they, they did, they did not. Well, I, I talked to Dr. Butts when you, when you asked me about this this afternoon. When I looked at the draft the summary of the draft legislation that's in the Senate, the start date is actually 2015-16 for implementation. Um, the, the regulations would become, they become effective 60 days, but when you actually read the legislation, the year it would go into effect would be 2015-16. Uh, Dr. Butts um, relayed that we have at North Penn done education about the Holocaust for a long time. Uh, particularly in the U.S. history classes, the current issues class at the high school, the AP history classes, and also in some of the uh, English courses at the middle school. So I believe just from the brief summary I read that we we're already in compliance with what the bill requires. Okay. But she, not next year, the year after. Correct. Because oh, I was told it was going to probably happen April or May. Well, but but realize when you when you read the legislation, it goes into effect. But when you look at the actual timelines in it, there's a year until the, until schools oh. are required to actually okay. incorporate the instruction because you have to give people lead time to plan lessons. I thought about that. Yeah. And the Department of Education in there is also mandated to come up with some curriculum guidelines for that instruction okay. as well. I, but I appreciate that piece of it. Thanks. Yep. Sure. Can we tell Harrisburg to not tell us? How to, to educate our children. I mean, my gosh, haven't, we haven't, you know, that kind of stuff is silly. Like, we haven't been, been teaching that, you know, for yeah, forever. Right. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's move forward. North Penn <coughs> Educational Foundation, Mrs. Murphy. Thank you. <clears throat> Although the Educational Foundation did not meet in the month of January, much work continues behind the scenes. The Foundation's first ever e newsletter and year end appeal were met with much success. In fact, more than $2,000 was raised via the year-end appeal, which featured a foundation project with one, of our, with one of our English language learners' classes. Thanks to ESL teacher Marilyn Leffler for allowing us to feature her grant and the wonderful work she does with our students. The foundation also held its staff tribute and raised over $800, and I am humbled to say that close to $7,000 in donations have come in for the Paul Murphy Memorial Fund. Two mid-year grants related to science have been chosen to receive support from this fund for the school year, for this school year, and the fund will continue to support projects in many years to come. The North Penn Alumni Association hosted a reception following the MPHS Winter Concert in December and welcomed more than 40 alum, alumna and friends to the event. More events are being planned for the spring. Unfortunately, the charity luncheon scheduled for Molly McGuire's in February has been canceled. I hope I didn't jinx that we're talking about February 22nd. It's not being a good time for Molly McGuire's, but anyway. We're working on and hoping to schedule a different location for the spring. I will keep you posted. Any questions about the foundation can be directed to Christine Liberoski at the ESC. Respectfully submit at Carolyn Murphy. Thank you. Any questions of the foundation? No, but I would like to add that I was at the uh, North Penn Educational Foundation concert, grant concert last night, along with Maddie and Carol Fink, and it was terrific. I mean, it was really outstanding, and uh, congratulations to Mr. DiValentino for putting that together. Uh, let's move forward with finance. Who's got finance in that? Uh, I got it. <coughs> Mr. O'Donnell. The Finance Committee report for Thursday, January 17th. There was no Finance Committee meeting in December, real easy. Uh, the next meeting will be here uh, on Monday the 27th at 6.30 p.m. following support services. End of report. Any questions on finance this evening? Safe schools. Mr. O'Donnell. Safe schools report. Um, January 16th. Huh. Anyway, the Safe Schools Committee has not met um, since the last board meeting. These are three easy reports to read. The next, the next meeting of the Safe Schools Committee has been scheduled for Monday the 27th following the Finance Committee right here at the ESC in this room. So there'll be three meetings in a row. End of report. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, let's move forward with personnel this evening. Mr. Kerr. <coughs> okay. Another <laughs> large informative <laughs> report. Personnel Committee met in Executive Session on January 7, 2014 from 5 to 6 p.m. to discuss matters of personnel, negotiations, and potential litigation. End of report. 
I've got that down really well. Any questions of personnel tonight? I, do. I don't even need to look at it. And, and I can't ask you any questions? No. I, you can ask a question. I can't answer it. But. Let's move forward with North Monco <clears throat> Technical Career Center. Who's got this one? No. Did they have a meeting? I'll do it. Oh, then I'll have it. <clears throat> well, we... we, we, we uh, <clears throat> Well, we had an brought initial meeting, right? Susan. Yeah, right. we brought Susan Leonard on, who's a new member. We had a reorganization meeting, I guess. Um, after the dinner? <clears throat> after the dinner. It was the holiday dinner, which is the, you know, the annual event that uh, the VOTEC puts on. The culinary students do just a magnificent job uh, every year, and uh, we, we all enjoy it. It, it. They invite, I mean, keep in mind, the VOTEC is, has five districts that, that send students to it, and so all the school board members from those districts attend, uh, some retirees, some other folks, uh, you know, local community officials. <clears throat> Very nice event. Um, the meeting was <clears throat> you know, pretty much a reorganization meeting. Uh, folks, uh, Bill Brong, who is on the Saturn board, was <clears throat> reelected as, uh, as the chairperson. Uh, another thing, too, we um, dedicated the boardroom to Captain Sam Schweiger, who was a long-serving member of the board who we lost a year or so ago. Uh, that was very touching. And, um, you know, we have a, have a meeting next Wednesday. Right. And I just want to say that um, I, um, I feel privileged to be on this board. I, it's an interesting place, and I, um, and I think what they do is a, is a wonderful thing for all of the communities that are involved in that. So. Thank you. I look forward to working on that committee. You, and you should get over there and get the tour and, you know, have Michael. Did you? Okay, good. Thank you. <clears throat> Montgomery County Intermediate Unit, Mrs. Murphy. We did not meet. Um, we won't meet until the 22nd, which is next Wednesday. But I, too, feel privileged to serve the IU. I think it is just really important to all the public school and private schools in Montgomery County. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, the public should be aware that the full board did meet in executive session this evening, January 16, 2014, from 6.30 to 7.35 p.m. to discuss matters of personnel, litigation, and negotiations. That's shorter than we are. All right, let's move forward with our superintendent's report, Dr. Dietrich. I recommend approval of settlement agreement for student 0116141, <coughs> whose name is on file in the office of the superintendent. So moved. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell, second by Mrs. Leonard. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. Recommend approval to extend the school bus transportation contract with first student for the 2014-2015 school year via extension of the 2013-14 contract rates with a 3% increase. You'll recall this is for our non-public transportation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Kerr, second by Mr. Scalco. Comments or questions? This is a one-year extension of Correct. the existing contract under the extension term. <clears throat> Correct. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Recommend approval to purchase a closed captioned encoder and a one-year contract with ENCO and Caption 3 service for North Penn Television as listed per item 04, excuse me, 02-14. So moved. This is mine. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Leonard. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Recommend approval of the administrative services budget of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for the fiscal year ending 630 of 2015 in the amount of $1,041,440 with no contribution from the school district. Motion by Mrs. Murphy, second by Mr. Kerr. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Recommend approval of the curriculum, instruction, and professional development services budget of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015, in the amount of $249,830, with a contribution from the school district in the amount of $9,816. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Charnock, second by Mr. Kerr. I'm sorry, Mr. O'Donnell. All, uh, comments or questions? All those in favor? I have one question. one question. Well, no, my only question is, I, didn't we sign? Do we have to like vote on these in the past and sign? We do. There should uh, be yes. some. Yeah, it'll come. Later. I'll distribute these. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. All right. I'll come after the vote. Okay. Good man. 
So all right, I have, we have a motion and a second. Any other comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have one question. I, I guess I think I asked it last year when we voted on this. How do we come up with the amount nine thousand eight hundred and sixteen dollars in a in a budget of two thousand and four hundred two hundred forty nine thousand? They, they use the WAG system. Well, actually, uh, they've transitioned at the intermediate unit. Quite a few of their budgets now are, are uh, primarily uh, fee-for-service. The Curriculum Instruction Professional Development Division is doing a lot of their things now on a fee-for-service basis. Uh, there are some fixed costs that are um, a part of uh, their operation, however, and they prorate those then uh, to each of the school districts. So that's our prorated amount uh, from North Penn. It's usually developed also by the amount of students being serviced directly. Yeah. No, we might not have a lot of students being serviced. Uh, not, it, there, it really isn't proportional to the district most of the time. It's proportional to what you actually use now. That was some, We used to have it the other way, and we were, the, we were the driving force behind changing it because, honestly, they used to do it by per, you know, enrollment, which meant we were always getting this monstrously huge bill that we never actually used, and we were actually paying for services that we didn't use. Yeah, no, I just want to know. So, yeah, we were one of the... Yeah, we were driving behind that. We were the changing force there. All right, uh, I have a motion and a second. Any other comments? All those in favor again? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that motion was approved. Recommend approval of the legislative services and grant development budget of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015, in the amount of $282,220, with a contribution from the school district in the amount of $13,883. So motion by Mrs. Murphy. Second. Second by Mr. Kerr. Comments or questions? Comment. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell. I normally do not vote for this, probably for 16 years. I have not voted for this um, because I have my own personal opinion about that because we have state legislators that do that. Uh, but last night I talked to the director because I, if you go to their website, you'll see that there's a lot of missing pieces that haven't been updated in uh, quite some time. So I've had the assurances of the director as well as Dr. Dietrich, that, um, who talked to the director, that they're going to update their website. And some of it may be very useful for North Penn School District. So uh, I'm going to vote for it tonight. First time in 17 years. Any other comments? I, yeah, I just want to comment and say thank you, Frank, for providing that information. That was extremely helpful. You're welcome. I get, as Tim knows, I get into all the detail. Yeah, in the past, when I've I've supported it last year for the first time too, only because honestly, part of the legislative services is lobbying. And even though it's for public education, it wasn't always for things that were helpful to North Penn. So I had if issues when they lobbied for things that were actually detrimental to us as a big district compared to some of the smaller districts where they would lobby for things that helped them and hurt us. So this year and, and some of their efforts now, we're pretty much all in the same boat no matter what, small and big. So. I have no problem supporting it either. May I add something too? It's also grants, um, yeah, the grants you know, and and, and and the grants that, that the legislative division helps get for the IU helps internally and it helps our students. It's not it's all kinds of um, contests and things, other things that help all students, um, and so I think that's an important piece of it. And they also help districts get grants. The grant website is two years and five months behind. You brought it up, so I add yeah, Right. They'll update their website. I do support and recommend this also. Uh, as you know, this board has been very active legislatively. I, as your superintendent, also consider it to be very important that superintendents be very active legislatively in uh, lobbying our uh, legislative members to be able to uh, serve public education. So I do support this, and I do recommend the approval. So I have a motion and a second. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Recommend approval of the Technology and Information Services budget of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2015, in the amount of $4,787,200, with a contribution from the school district in the amount of $181,591. So moved. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell. <coughs> Second. Second by Mr. Kerr. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. I recommend approval of the 2014-2015 school calendar for item 04-14A through B. <clears throat> Motion by Mrs. Murphy. Second. Second by Mr. Kerr. Got you on that one. Just a little bit. 
Comments or comments or questions? Hit the button. Uh, we'll publish it on our website right yes. away mm -hmm. and make sure it's readily available for everybody so they can start planning. Many people do plan a year in advance for things, so it's worthwhile. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Calendar's approved. I recommend approval of the resolution under Section 15-1502A of the Public School Code of 1949, providing for the designation of five additional days to be designated as local holidays in the 2014-15 school calendar, as the official local holidays being November 28th, December 24th, December 26th, December 31st of 2014, and April 3rd of 2015, for item BA4, A through B. So moved. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell. Second by Mrs. Charno. Comments or questions? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. I recommend the acceptance of the gifts to the district as listed. Uh, man, is, it, is this the, but so moved. Motion by Mr. Kerr, second by Mr. Charna. Comments or questions, well, Mr. Kerr? Is it the same Eubner family that has provided, but you know what, we all invite them some night. They've been very and generous. They really have. I mean, we just, I mean, they've gone out of their way, I think, and I, I think we, they deserve some recognition. So I know they probably don't want to come, but mm -hmm. but maybe we can figure something out, invite them. Okay. Thanks. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Approved. I recommend approval of personnel items listed under A through C. So moved. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell. Second. Second by Mr. Kerr. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? They are approved. Recommend approval of student travel per item BA7. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Murphy. Second. Second by Mr. Kerr. Comments or questions? I wish North Penn students well in some of those academic competitions. I will be there with them. <coughs> Business leaders, you better be careful who you're cheering for now. I cheer for both sides. All right. Good. Hopefully everybody gets tied. Council Rock and North Penn. We've well, gone head-to-head head before in the past, <coughs> unfortunately. All right. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. I recommend approval of contracts per item BA-8, copies of which are on file in the Office of Business Administration. So moved. Motion by Mr. Kerr? Second. Second by Mr. O'Donnell. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Contracts are approved. This concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Dietrich. Let's move forward with the finance report. Mr. Shock. Okay, before I get started, let me just remind the board members to uh, sign and date this form and uh, send it back to me, and you can mark that you all voted for all of the four budgets from the IU. Thank you. Uh, this is the Treasurer's Report for December 2013. Cash receipts for the month of December totaled $7,595,016.03. Cash disbursements for December totaled $16,558,176.15, leaving total funds available of $141,050,780.83. That's the end of the report. Thank you. Shock, would you move forward with the sanction and approval of invoices? I recommend approval of disbursements to be sanctioned for the month of December 2013 in the amount of $18,375,970.05 and disbursements to be approved for the month of January 2014 in the amount of $3,246,755.52. Thank you. Motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Kerr. Second. Second by Mr. Miniscalco. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Sanction is done. Federal, state grants, and other programs. Dr. Holder? No report. No report? No, no report. Any comments or questions for that? Can't you even say we we didn't meet this? Month, <laughs> so yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> the holidays. The federal government was shut down. One hopes in the next yeah. month or two I have something for you oh. on that. So. Ben, I just. Other business? I haven't gone there yet, but okay. Let's open up to other business. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes, I almost forgot. Um, I'd like to have a quick discussion on leading to a motion, if it's possible. Uh, oh. We've kicked around um, AstroTurf, or uh, turf for the football field. Um, <clears throat> it was, so it's unclear, it was clearly rejected in Support Services Committee. 
the chairman, John's not here, he's adamantly against it. Uh, uh, but it was suggested to me to bring it up under, under business tonight. What I simply would like to do is if the majority of the board would simply approve uh, uh, John Strobel's department of somebody to go out and simply get a quote at this point in time. That's all. Just get, hey, what would it cost to replace the dirt field for a turf field? So I'm going to make that. Number, so this like forever hold your peace. We're either for it or against it down the road. So wait a minute. But all I'm asking for at this point in time is simply what would it cost? So let me be clear. You're making a motion to send Mr. Strobel out to get a price. Yes. On doing that, you couldn't even get that approved at the committee. Oh, no, John. <laughs> I I was there. I know. What you know how John is. is. Yes, I know exactly. John was adamant. He was clear that he was and not for it. He recommended that I come here to the full board, and we have a, just a discussion. Okay. Uh, so I, I also talked to Dr. Yes. Dietrich about this, right. and to take one step at a time, one step at a time, simply just to get what would it cost. That's all. So your motion is to pursue. Uh, Costing of the football, the, doing the, the football field to, turf to uh, the stadium. I'm oh, sorry. Turf in the stadiums. Yes, turf, just just okay. turf in, inside That's, the track. I have a motion for that. Do I have a second? So we can have discussion at this point. Second. Second by Mrs. Murphy. Okay, now let's have some comment, Mrs. Charnock. Are we talking about just a quote from one? Place or are we looking to Quite a, determine? Yeah, Mr. Budget. Solicitor, like an engineer's estimate, probably is what he means. Yeah, that's well, what I'm if, if I may, I, I think it's far more involved than just going out to get a number. I, I, I believe, and I'm looking to Mr. Strobel here. Uh, I, I believe to to truly get an accurate number, a bid package, Documents a spec right. package well, would right. need to be prepared. That level of detail would need to be prepared before you would get a price that would actually be worthwhile. Um, uh, I, I don't know whether there's something short of that in terms of being able to go out and getting rough estimates as to what people think that would cost based upon similar projects otherwise. There might be another method to kind of get a ballpark figure that allows for further discussion, but to get an actual true price for installation of the field at, at your field, I, I think would require uh, you know, some significant upfront cost to prepare the, the, the specs. Uh, How about we need clarity? Well, How about if John, I mean, it, and, and I hear you, Jack, and you're absolutely right, but maybe John can call some of the other schools that have recently put in turf good. stadiums, whatever, and just get a, just get a feel, you know, <coughs> bring it back. I, I mean, that, that, that's really yeah, uh, a big uh, yeah, estimate. But but that, um, I'm asking for that. Uh, I, I know Bob, Councilor Rock put one in. Southerton's is fairly new. Uh, yeah, and I don't know how many others. So maybe how's this? If you could just go out, and I, this may not even require a motion, but just maybe it does. Just get maybe four or five schools, if there are four or five schools in the area, simply because they, 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 and assuming they're all the same size, because some of them have a, a soccer on that also. Can I, Correct. Can I, yeah, can we, all right. I'm going to make a motion to table that because the discussion really just isn't ready to happen here. And send it back to support services. Do I have a second for that? Yes. <laughs> All right, I have a second for that. Does that pretty much, can I call that vote or do we want to have a discussion on the table? <laughs> you can ask for discussion on that. Yeah, let's have a discussion on anybody. Everybody okay with sending it back to support services? That's what well, I would like to do right with, now. With the um, understanding that Mr. Strobel will attempt to get a couple, whatever, numbers from some other facilities folks that he knows in area and, and other school districts around here. To provide some basic information to support services, there you go. I don't think there you go. no harm in that. I, I'm I'm not going to agree with that because I can tell you right now I'm not going to support this coming forward. That's why I'm going to table it. I think this is a huge investment, and at a time when we're fighting over text, having enough textbooks for people. That's and, simply and why I'm bringing it here for discussion. Well, I'm telling you, that's why I want to table it. Send it back to support services for better discussions. And by the way, if you, if you couldn't get it out of support services, so I don't think it's going to go too much farther. And Vince, you're, you're probably right. All I'm simply saying is, is I want to bring it up, have a discussion, get a feeling for some of the board or the whole board. Uh, if it goes forward, great. If not, I forever hold my peace. I'm sure, John. You won't hear another word out of me. I'm sure the chairman of support service is not for it. And I'll need, 
third member. You're the third member. I don't support it as well. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> you and John support services did not support it, and John recommends that I come here. <laughs> well, apparently not. That's why I would like to motion to table it. Let's have some more discussions. Does anybody have a problem with tabling it? Because that's what that's. If you want to, let's talk about that. That's what I'm going to call the vote for. Send it back. Can I just ask that also if we can have what is the consequence of not doing it and the cost for that? Well, we have grass. Yeah, we have grass. grass. It grows. That, People will play on it. Just keep the grass fields. And you just keep fixing it as. Yeah. yeah it works. Okay. So, any other discussion on the motion to table? All those in favor of tabling this discussion? <laughs> Say aye. 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 Not? Motion is table. Aye. <laughs> okay. I, I appreciate your fervor of ranking your passion for it. I just don't agree with the expenditure. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Everybody here? So done.